Hi, this is Mark Roth and it's Mathematics for Social Justice. In this video, I want to talk about the game of NIM. So, so it's a fun game to play with students and um, I play for a while without teaching them the, the strategy for always winning. So, for example, So I might ask the students to play me, so, um, or they can play each other actually. So when it's your turn, you can only take sticks from one row. You can wipe out an entire row or just part of a row. In fact, you can just take one stick if you want, but you can't take sticks from two different rows in the same turn. I let them play without teaching them the strategy first, but let's talk about the strategy. So the strategy is based on powers of two. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So ten is equal to two and eight. Okay? And if you want, you can circle these numbers. And here we have five, which is one of four. So we're only using powers of two. This is two to the first power, two to the third power, two to the second power. Here we have one plus two. So that's two to the zeroth power, two to the first power. Now, when it's your turn, you wanna make a change, which you can always do, that leaves an even number of each of these. Now you can't add another eight, so this eight has to go. So if it's your turn, your only good move is to take sticks from the top row. Now the twos are already even, the ones are already even. So when you're erasing the eight, you wanna turn it into a four. So which means you're going to raise four sticks. Um, so it should be six left. One, two, three, four, five. So you need to raise that many. So now let's let this be the before and this be the after. So this is two, four, and uh, four, one, and one, two. So everything's even now. Two twos, two fours, two ones. So now your opponent does not have a good move. So let's just say your opponent does this. So that changes this to two. Now, so what should your move be? Well, you need another one to match this one and you need to get rid of a two and you need another four to match this four, or you need to get rid of this four. Actually, there's no way to match this four. You have to get rid of that four. But in the process, you're gonna need another two and another one. So you're gonna, uh, actually, you have to get rid of this two and this four, but you're gonna need another one. So you take everything but one. So now you have one, two, two, one. So you've made a good move and you can't lose. No matter what your opponent does, you'll finish the game. Suppose your opponent does this. So change that to a one. Your move is to take these two. Everything's even again. Your opponent does this and you take this and you win the game. So when I play this with students, I let them play each other. But then what I often do next is say, Uh, who can beat me? I tell the students they should be able to win this game if they play perfectly. But I also tell them I know how to play perfectly. So if they don't play perfectly, they won't win. So they try one after the other to try to uh, play perfectly. Um, well, their only good move is to take one from the top. And uh, if they do anything else, they're going to lose. Um, but I, I do this before I teach them the strategy. So another what I do sometimes is five, four, three. I'll ask them to play me and see if they can beat me. So they like trying to beat the teacher, but most of them fail until finally someone does beat me. But again, if you wanted to analyze this, this would be one and four. 
and 4, and 1, and 2. So the only good move is to take 2 from the bottom. So then you have 1 and 4, 4, and 1. So again, everything's even. Okay. So if my student took two from the bottom, uh, my student would have the chance to win. They'd have to continue to play perfectly, but they would have a chance to win now. Otherwise, if they did anything else, they would definitely lose. 